A little blue looks to the winding lines, waiting for food and snacks. Oh, I know I can make it, I know! The blue dashes through other moving blues in the carpeted corridor. He looks to the concession stand and watches as the light above flashing food turns off and the remaining blues wander away from light. Wait! The small blue shouts, running to the counter. Show's about to start up again. A heavy, sweating blue says, closing up the gate. The little blue takes a huff and slowly walks back down the corridor to a cutout entrance to the nearly full courtroom, buzzing with chatter. The little blue stands atop a staircase, looking down to the two tables in the center. The two faceless suited blues sit at theirs as mate now stands, waiting alone. Come on, mate. Dead! A decrepit blue shouts. Get to your seat! The little blue tucks his head down and runs up the stairs, past all the blues, intently staring down to the floor. Mate rubs his shoes together and then looks up to the sea of blues taking in his life. He takes a big breath and turns around to the council staring at him. Inmate B7, the center elder states. The crowd slowly mutes. You may begin your case of defense for the charges of disordinance with state media, state expression, and the act of conjuring reclusive extraterrestrial knowledge energetically. Mate's head snaps back. I- I'm sorry, what is the third charge? The center elder clears its throat. <clears throat> Inmate D7, throughout intermission, the council found the prosecution's evidence compelling enough to add an additional charge we found to be fitting for this circumstance. Found or created? Found, Inmate D7. We found it fair to announce to you for your knowledge. We've concluded these shows, the artwork you present to this world as being consciously created, though channeled through distant lines of veiled communication. That combined with your extreme privacy, we found the additional charge to be fitting. Mate stares at the council. We hope you find the short notice explanation sufficient. You may now begin your case of defense. Mate looks around to the crowd and steps back. He takes in all the blue faces. Many old, though many young, many unaware, many forgot, many too beaten, many too lost. The training wheels fall off, mate whispers, as he starts to walk in a circle, staring to a point in the ground. He laps over and over again in the small area as the crowd grows anxious, locked into the hypnotism. One of the faceless blues taps the other in suit. <laughs> Look at this guy, it laughs. Mate looks up and walks over to them, right in front of their table, staring into their unidentifiable faces. You stupid fucking idiots, Mate says, taking them aback. I can make this quick too, he says. My presence alone. Don't you see I already won? Don't you motherfucking see? Mate holds up his arms, praising them to the crowd. All your cameras, he points. All your show. Every blue on the planet seeing me. Who do you think they're going to want to be? You? Dull, round clay on the orb's board? Or me? He mockingly starts to lightly jump up and down, kicking out his legs. A being that's free. Mate starts skipping in circles around the courtroom. The crowd, ah! Silence! The center elder bellows. No! This is my defense! Mate shouts aloud, growing in pace and energy. Look! He shouts to the surrounding crowd. Look! Don't you see? Blues in the audience begin to stand and hold up screens that flash. No! Mate shouts. You have to remember this! Remember these feelings! Remember your own mind! It's in your heart and mind I exist forever! Mate's pace quickens and quickens as more and more blues begin to stand and shout. Order! Shouts the center elder as other elders begin to stand as the courtroom begins to shake. Shut up! Mate shouts at them with a smile as the entire audience and blues now stand jumping and shouting like never before. The elders look up at the circus enveloping around them. Many evacuate as the railing to the courtroom's left collapses with many cheers falling behind. The center elder stands steady, taking in the raucousness. He looks forward to the ringleader staring back. Mate holds out his arms and shrugs. 
I only do my part, Mate says, as many blues have now made it onto the courtroom floor, hopping in circles, cheering around Mate as the walls shake more. Mate looks around to the blue bodies expressing themselves all around him. He smiles as a loud suction sounds from above, stirring wind in the courtroom. Blues transform from joy to frozen and look up in awe as the shining, seducing dark bottom of the orb floats down, slowly sucking blues from their seat into it as, as it proceeds closer. Mate stares up to the dark shadow cast it from atop him and to the starry universe behind it, and quickly then to the elder who grins back with a clap as more and more blues get sucked into the orb. Mate looks to the scared faces leaving their feet into its darkness. He turns back and is quickly struck by a guard. Sorry, mate. Drops out the mouth into Mate's sinking consciousness, viewing the last of the blues being drinking into the orb. His blinking eyes look to the large blue arms dragging his feet down a hall with whispers walking in the air. That execution is out of the question. We've executed enough blues. When he caused this, he did. There are things beyond your knowledge. Nate's vision moves from a glowing dark purple ocean above him to strange rounded, rounded entities with only mouths. He will not be getting away with this. I cannot allow that. If he wants to live forever, then so be it. He wants to be free. We'll grant his wishes. Take him to the station for his final goodbyes and wait for my arrival.